Nelson Mandela said that when you speak to someone in a language that he understands, that goes to his head. But if you speak to him in his language, that goes to his heart. When I was three years old, all that my parents could think about was why their son, me, would not start speaking. On a scale, on a relative scale, children of this age speak around 200 to 250 words, depending on which language. Tried as they might, I just would not begin to enunciate. And the doctors just said, give him some more time. Enter my grandmother with the best solution on planet Earth. <laughs> she said, to ensure that your kids start speaking, you should, any guesses? She said you should feed him donkey's milk. I know, right? My parents firmly protested. They said no. And surely enough, for the next couple of weeks, I drank liters of donkey's milk. Because that's how parenting in India works. After you've made your point, you just said, yes, mom. <laughs> so almost as if it was magical, a couple of months into the donkey milk drinking, I started speaking three languages all of a sudden. Now, this was helpful because my parents are both polyglots, and they spoke all these languages. And in my mind, I didn't even know they were different languages. I had to keep them on, on their toes, catching up with all the mistakes I made, because they had to correct me three times over for the same mistake. But surely and slowly, I learned. I learned to speak these languages at home itself. Sitting here at EDEC Business School, I'm sure all of you guys know how important languages are. They help you project confidence, they help you with your job hunt, and more importantly, they help you relate with people. And that's the important part, they help you with relationships. When I was all of 24, my dreams came true and I came to France, thanks to my parents. My first day in Paris, I woke up early in the morning and made my way down to the buffet where it was going to be served. It was not served yet, and I started chatting up with one of the servers. 30 minutes later, my parents joined me, and we have this server come to us with a tray of pain au chocolat. He introduced me to the wonder that is pain au chocolat. Now, the reason I bring this up is because back then my level of French was really minimal. All I could speak was four or five sentences, and I just introduced myself and said I, I wanted to learn French. But non-verbally, he was willing to show me that this, this uh, dish is important in the French culture. And you see it popping up in all sorts of references. Our batch of pain au chocolat was nice and hot relative to everyone else who was having cold pain au chocolat. So he was also telling me that it's important that you eat this hot. It was crunchy on the outside and chocolate liquid on the inside. <laughs> that was miles better than the cold one we just had. I'm still in touch with him. He just got married a couple of months ago. Now, the reason that this journey is emotional is because there is a link between words and memory. And there's been countless researchers on this, on this premise to show that words and memories are related. There's also a French expression called Madeleine de Proust. There are things that remind you of your childhood. And one of those things that remind you of your childhood are words, along with smell and songs and so on. So if it's clear that speaking uh, in the words that someone understands gives you an emotional advantage, relationship with them, then how many words do we need? Let's say I want to learn German. How many words would I need? Any guesses around the room for an everyday conversation? How many unique words would I need? 400? 1,000? Uh, according to some researchers from BBC, we need 800 word families. Now, a word family or a lemma, it's a word with all its inflections, like run, running, and ran count as one lemma. Now, this may seem daunting to you. 800 word families, I can't do that, Josh. Maybe this is for babies, not for me. Uh, you're partly right and partly wrong. Babies are good at language learning. But here's where it's interesting. According to a research from the University of Haifa, it is actually easier for an adult to pick up new words relative to a kid. It's proven. Now, of course, it's under certain conditions, but it's proven. What we are overlooking, though, is that the baby has no choice, <laughs> and it has no safe language to default to. And that's the precise two places where we fail in language learning. 
when we are trying to pick up these words, you can find these words online, by the way. If you just Google the words you require, you, there are so many websites which will give it to free. But the trick is, how do you keep it in memory? That's where the skill comes up. And research has proven this over and over again that repetition is key. We underestimate the amount of time a baby puts in to learning a language. Now, in line of this repetition, I propose that you spend 20 hours in your target language. And you'll see how competent you get in merely 20 hours. And this is actually an idea proposed by Josh Kaufman, another speaker on the TEDx forum. But he's talking about any skill. And I tried this out for myself. So I made a list of all of these words. I didn't want the online version. So after I moved to France, I made a list of all the words that you could probably, I, I would possibly hear on an everyday subject. I would pull out my phone, rudely interrupt people, and ask them, how do you spell that? Could you please spell that for me? And I made this list of all of these words. Now I made myself one step better by explaining those words in short paragraphs of 60 words. That technique is called the Feynman technique, where you pretend to be a teacher, and you pretend you have an imaginary student, and you try to teach him something. I did that in French, and for some complex expressions and words, I even did that in English. 500 of these, and I, the first 100 were even corrected by some of my friends. So I propose that you spend this time in learning your language. 20 hours per month is around 40 minutes a day, and that's a hell lot of a complete of a commitment. 10 hours on the input side and 10 hours on the output side. How I did it on the input side was I watched TV shows, I watched movies, I listened to music, and when I was really tired, I watched the same movie again, but this time with other subtitles. And on the output side, I made it a point to express to someone what I just consumed over the last week. I made it a point to tell them what my week was like, and if someone is, if my friends are not available or if I'm too tired, I just spoke into a microphone. But you need to clock it. And this 20 hours is not getting your resources together, setting your computer up, downloading the right software. Do that first and then hit the clock. If you clocked your work with 20 hours, I challenge you that you will be grossly incompetent <laughs> in your language learning, which is much better than agnostic and not knowing anything about your language. I have another dimension that I'd like to share about acquiring these words. I made it a point to spend time with as many families as possible. That's my favorite French teacher, Lizzie. She's right next to me. And that's her family. I spent Christmas at their place last year. When I was spending three, four days at their place, and I was able to hear the same language that the little ones in their arms was able to hear. And I was able to understand what they're trying to say. Although I understood, I already knew all these words before. Getting out of that three-day journey, I was much better than I was before. So I think what I'm trying to tell you is when you start working on this language learning journey, you'll see people who are trying to, who will be willing to help you out of nowhere. That's Remy and Mathilde. Mathilde and Lizzie are here, by the way. Hi, guys. And um, these guys took every Thursday's afternoons and came to edX to teach students French. And it was for free. Uh, there were some edX students that joined as well. That's Maxime in the left bottom corner and Sarah in the right bottom corner. They did it for free and they were just telling stories about their week where international students could hear it and try to tell it to their neighbor. And these relationships happen when you step out of your comfort zone and make known to the person in front of you that you want to speak his language. I met a friend in Paris who wanted to tell me how she learned Russian. She's of Indian origin, but she was born and raised here in France. She learned Russian in merely 90 days, and she recorded her journey. Here's what she sounds like after 90 days. Um, C plus plus and other languages, I don't know how to say it. Да, Но языки это тоже язык. другие. Это как язык, язык, да? Да, 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 язык. Я, я ничего не знаю об этом, но <laughs> а, мой, мой друг сказал, да, ты, 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 ты можешь изучать, и я сказала, я не могу. А, это... I've implemented a Frankenstein of all of those methods I've shared with you so far. And as a student who's learned five languages to fluency and has notions in three others, I'm here to tell you that language learning is not reserved for a class of smart people. 
or for courageous extroverts, people who step out of their comfort zone. Now, I'm an introvert, Josh, I can't learn. No, language learning is for everyone, if you did it right. I spent my summer in a French farm in the east of France. When I was here, my priorities were straight. First of all, I had to ride horses, because priorities, right? <laughs> and secondly, I wanted to pick up French in the idiomatic level. Le sous-entendu, as they say in French. I wanted to understand these expressions without any English translations. And over three months of staying with these guys and cooking their French food and cooking Indian food, they're eating with their fingers, by the way. That's my beloved biryani. <laughs> After three months of staying with them, I noticed that's where I built my bank of words as well. A good chunk of it was built on the farm. I noticed how I was way better when I got out. Another myth that you might say is, Josh, I want to learn German, but I'm in Singapore. I don't have the finances to go to, London, to Germany, and I don't think I'll ever pick it up. Um, that's true and false at the same time. I, I stayed for six months in Amsterdam, and I tried my best to pick up Dutch, and it didn't work. The reason it didn't work was my level in Dutch was so minimal that no one could even help me. So when you arrive, make sure that you already know a bit. Broken five sentences is better than zero sentences, because people don't have the time or the patience. Have you seen how people talk to kids? You need to be spoken that way in order to pick up a language. Now, during my stay over here, I also was paid for free horse riding classes. <laughs> Alongside my horse riding classes, I remember distinctly speaking with the owner of the stable, and she shared her tarte mirabelle with me. That's a pie that they make in the summertime in the east of France. And she shared her uh, business journey, how she, why she set this table up, and she was talking to me about philosophical stuff. And luckily, I was able to understand and respond to her. And I noticed that when I was putting this picture up on Instagram, I noticed that the reason she's doing this, because there were scores of other youngsters there, and she chose me. The last piece of Tarte Mirabelle was for me. <laughs> and it happened because I was a foreigner. I was not one among them. I was a foreigner, and I was able to understand her language. And that's powerful. Such short a stay, but such impactful an afternoon, all, of, all because I was willing to step out of my comfort zone. One new relationship, because I was willing to step out of my comfort zone. She even shared with me, I don't know if you've had this conversation with anyone. She shared with me why she can never live in a city. Has anyone told you that? I, I don't think you've had a heartfelt communication until you've got to that level of sharing your heart's feelings. I hope that your travels take you far and wide. I hope that you guys get to go to the destinations that you want to get to. I hope that your sabbatical here, year, or your um, Erasmus year is on another country and you make valuable friends while you're there. If you just clocked your work and worked on it, I'm sure you will succeed. And while you're there making those awesome friends, I hope you speak to them in a way that it goes to their heart. Thank you very much.